All of our society within our circle of seven. All the national departments, we honor all children of our people. Brother, what we call you, brother? You're just giving powerful information, brother. It's done. But again, all throughout those societies, they had a various vision issues with the world. Exactly. With the way they saw the world and what had to come from amongst them to straighten out their morality. Yes. Like you said, different yes. uh, to straighten out their ethical ways. Yes. You know, to what we see as Jesus. So justice, you know, yes. where do we get it from? The right. You know? That's right. And so it, it's a manifestation, a code of life. Right. You know, a way of life. Right. It goes way beyond just thinking that the foundations of our beliefs only begin in the 6th and 7th centuries, if you will, uh, of the common era with the coming of the Arab prophet. Again, peace be upon him and all the prophets. True. But what we're saying is, the idea of prophets mm -hmm. coming goes way beyond. That's why we honor all, all divine prophets. What could be better than a movement that says to a Buddhist, you're my sister, you're my brother, because I believe in the teachings of your prophet, mm -hmm. because we see it as part of a continuum that comes exactly. down to us through our prophet known as Rabbi Jur Ali. Meeting someone who honors Muhammad, same thing. We honor your prophet because this is part of a, of a continuum. Of people. Exactly. They follow the religion of Abraham. Right. Abraham predates Muhammad, right. peace be upon him, right. by a long time. And, and yet, like I said, this is that all-time religion. Exactly. So we can even go back religion. beyond Ibrahim mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. because we're talking about spiritual teachings that are supposed to be at the the at root the of at the core, the core, the root of what we were given. They say right. Adam was the first prophet, then there was Seth, then there was Enoch. So they begin exactly. at the mother and father of the exactly. family, Asiatics and, and Muslims, Muslims, those who were tied in. That's right. With the universal right. understanding. And I mean, oh, so we we shouldn't be having any, uh, as they say, problem with any uh, Muslim who follows the, the tenets in terms of saying, I'm going to live uh, this life of, of service and uh, submission in the sense of trying to create, as we put it, because we'll break it down, that's why we give it, mm -hmm. love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. How do we conceive of Allah? The Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So we can give you a definition of what Allah means, mm -hmm. right? But so much of it, again, and I get this, this is why we, and I appreciate your brother Tahar, uh, they were saying as well. We have a problem essentially too with folks who are putting on the physical accoutrement of saying we're Moorish American, but we're not upright, independent, and, and, and courageous, I feel this, right? We are essentially um, dealing with a lot of folk who are not really trying to transform how we carry and conduct ourselves. Absolutely. We should be nobles. Mm -hmm. In the sense, what, right? Shakespeare, that's why I even use that title for my, right. my book. Othello. People say, why are you using Othello? That's, yeah. that's you know, I heard that, that, we, that weird yeah, argument. And, I and I'm like, wait this a minute. Get Othello's children, they, in the book, they call him Othello the Moor. Right. It's simply a reference to who he, who, what type exactly. of people they were. Right. And it's simply a reference to an example of a Moor who didn't love himself enough mm -hmm. as Wasn't to, it right, Wasn't to it recognize essentially that he was being undone by Yago. Mm -hmm. Right? So the point is, this gets back to the to the to the seat of why I use it. Not just because I know most people if they've heard the term more, if they're educated, know the context of Shakespeare, but because they're then saying, if they read it, the more in Shakespeare's Othello suffers from a certain self-esteem. Absolutely. And even Yon, right? And even Yon Carew points that out. The great, yeah. late, the late great Yon Carew, the scholar, who I quote in there, who was saying that he didn't love himself enough, essentially, and as a result, he goes overboard mm -hmm. and doesn't trust his wife, and then ends up killing his wife, and then ends up killing himself. Right. So the idea is using that analogy of what happens, how self-destructive are we mm -hmm. if we don't truly learn to love ourselves, Excellent. know thyself first. Right, love, right? Because when you love, and I don't mean like narcissistic. Yeah, right? that no. weird. I'm not talking <laughs> the about the appreciation right. of what you are and what right. we are and what we have. Right, we are a manifestation of Allah, Allah in man, mm. made in the image and after the likeness of Father God Allah, mm -hmm. which means that we have an obligation to uphold what again? Love, truth, peace, mm -hmm. freedom, and justice. This people try to make religion so complicated. Right. What Drew Ali did as our prophet was he simplified it. Mm -hmm. And he came Made it to for us to see it, so exactly. we could see it. That's right.
right. because like every other nation of people, they had deviated from the way that That's was brought right. to them. That's right. So from amongst them had to come one who could see it, yes. you know, and direct yes. them in the course for them. Stop looking at it from their way and their way and the way it was shown to them. Right. Because they had their own distortion. Exactly. As we have our own distortion, which is self-hate. Right. Not Absolutely. idolatry. Not uh, 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 the the, the uh, hierarchy or caste system that they had in Buddha, uh, in Buddhism, uh, uh, in India. Uh, you, with the Buddha. Uh, oh, you mean Hin Hinduism? H Hinduism, right. Islam, and and of course coming from uh, uh, the, the the system of money worship that they had that Jesus had to overcome. You join it with the Israelites. You join, but we, our people, have that system of self hate, that system of, of self denial. Right. You know that system of, of self ignorance. When you, you know? say self denial, what do you mean by? That? Well, how you said well when when we come from this uh, the so called comedic community. You know, who want to say, the, well, Moors enslaved Africans, but Moors are Africans. Right. Again, the denial of the self. You know what I mean? Well, I'm comedic, but I'm not Moorish. Again, denial of the self. I'm Muslim. I can't be Moorish. Again, denial right. of the self. Now, I'm Christian. I can't follow more. Denial uh, of the self. Which is I'm black, but you're... I'm wearing black. Right. Huh? Denial of yourself. Mm -hmm. so, 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 brother, when, when you bring me to a point. I've, I've taken on the name Tahaka Bay, you know, um, which is consistent with my birth name, which I ain't going to tell y'all because y'all like to play games. No, nah, you know what I'm saying? But no, I actually taken on the name Tahaka Bay, fully changed my name. It's, it's official. Um, but the reason why I did that is because the Prophet Noble Drew Ali was known as the Egyptian Adapt. And I wanted to show uh, in my name that there is no separation between Tahaka and the Bay. The Moorish and the Kemetic. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And so a, a, a Kemetic guy, if you will, asked me one time, say, Oh, how you gonna be a Moor and name yourself Tahaka Bay? Say, how you gonna be a Tahaka? You're not no Tahaka. Brother, can you give us a brief uh, uh, history of the migration of the Moors from ancient Kemet? Our prophet teaches us that uh, the Moors was given permission from the Pharaohs. So that indicates a migration. Up there, uh, just something brief, my brother, because we're going to be able to go into something later on the show. Something, but it's and something brief. Something, let me go to Sheikh Anta Jilt, who is, uh, for good reason, if you will, a kind of patron saint of pan African intellectualism. Who I have great respect, I mean, Jilt was brilliant. Jilt said that the Moors, now, notice I say he was brilliant. But Jup also, like any of us, is not perfect. And I, so what requ what's required, of course, is other research and researchers to help clarify. Jup made the argument that the Moors essentially were new arrivals to Africa. And he says that many records say that they are from Yemen. Yet, he also points out in a, uh, African origin of civilization that the people of Yemen were a colony of Abyssinia or Ethiopia at the time that the Prophet Muhammad was born. He's the economy of the time. So what essentially he's saying is there's a connection, right? Here's Jill who makes the point that the Moors are, are essentially uh, new arrivals to, to the continent of Africa. But then he says that they come from Yemen. But there's no great wall of Africa to prevent people from the continent of Af Africa migrating back and forth across Africa into what we know is Asia. Absolutely. Asia. So when I hear people saying this as if, wait, that's, so by that logic, those of us here in the Americas who are identifying as uh, uh, African uh, 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 American shouldn't do so because we're not right now physically on the continent of Africa. What we're saying is that there is a link in terms of our ancestry. There is an ancestral link between our ancestors who were on the continent of Africa who came here. The same is true then when you're looking at Yemen. When Jeop said that, he's saying that there's a connection. Yemen, which borders, right, has this heavy influence from uh, you know, Ethiopia or Abyssinia. But the ancient Kemites were the first cousins, mm -hmm. if you will, of the people to the south. Absolutely. What we would know as the, as the, the right, the, the Sudan, Kush, Aksum, uh, Ethiopia, Abyssinia, uh, oh, man, Ta, Ta Seti, right? So, and all this relates, as you say, to Old Man Kush. So, yeah, right. 
So when, when folks, like you said, say you can't be a more and at the same time assert your connection to Kemet, that doesn't make any sense. What you're saying is, I'm using the designation of Moorish American for reasons that really relate to how the structure of the law is in this country. That's what we're saying. That's why we're saying, because we understand. There we go. In a Brother, democratic please republic. say that one more time, but because this is what people don't understand. During the ancient times, there was no nation states. Right, exactly. This right. is a new era exactly. of time. Understand exactly. the language with the prophet, exactly. Noah Juhali uses. Yeah. This is a so, new era of time. The prophet had come to address the need of, of these of times today. and his right. times, right? Because, it, just like you said, in antiquity, we didn't have nation states <laughs> like we have now. So, but now, in the prophet's time... We have will, nation states. Nation states. So what the prophet was doing was saying, I need to set up something that's going to protect our people, mm -hmm. who are legitimately Moors. He didn't make it up. He no, didn't pull it out of, out of a hat. He said, this is, the history, right, is our history. He knew, evidently, about the history of the Moroccan Empire mm -hmm. and its extension, like I said, as far south as the Senegal River and as far east as the border of uh, Egypt, and also other sources that indicate the out beyond the Atlantic. So he was saying, look, in this United States where you have to declare your national name, because only national names, only nations, mm -hmm. can be counted under the law as people. Mm -hmm. You can't be defined by a term that says that you've lost your personhood. personhood. And under the law in the 18th century and the 19th century, based upon the Constitution, based upon the, the uh, of course, even the Declaration of Independence, it was understood that you had to have a national, national. name, personhood. <laughs> the hard thing for people to grasp is that when you use the term black, so well, you just don't want to be black. What I'm saying is black is not a nation. At all. To say black, and certainly not Negro and color, no. right? So, people, me, right, no, no. so basically, when people look at the law, that's mm -hmm. why when I wrote A Fellow Children in the New World, I, I was as meticulous as I could be in laying out the legal history that showed that people who were designated as Negro, black, and colored were then essentially seen as, as the great historian, late great, John Hope Franklin, out of Duke University, one of the fathers of African American history, said, really, Negroes who were free were what he called semi-free Negroes. See, because they really weren't free, because by virtue of being designated as a Negro, right. you really right. weren't free. You're still a but right, you're still a Negro. But those who had national names, that's why you have examples of, of people with Africoid features who would claim they were French citizens. Mm -hmm. And then they were not treated under the mm -hmm. law as semi-free Negroes. That's why you had Moors in South Carolina, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, Georgia, in Louisiana, who were saying, no, no, we're Moors. We don't want to be designated as Negro, Black, or Colored, because we know under your law, that's right. once you designated as such, we're not protected as free nationals as in this rise of people. It really is, I just say, brothers and sisters, understand, it Little really is that simple. Really. It has to do with the law. This is a, why you stand so you agree with the law? We live in the United and, and, States. But you know what? Can I, but, can I ask real quick? Yes. Just to kind of um, fill some of that out as well. Um, uh, in the, 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 the Treaty of the Fall of the Night, right? When they, when they went from being Moors and having their own customs and laws, etc. And then if you wanted to leave, you were told that you could go to the Berber lands. That's not. Right? And so, we don't want to interrupt you. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well, well my brother. It's good to meet you, man. Praise the Lord. This is love, brother. Y'all come back together, man. Islam treated the work. Most definitely. We have already spoken to the Queen Ranch. We all as well. Islam. Where it says that. I ain't gonna uh, say to the term. Islam. 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 I'll be at the meeting. I'll be at the meeting tonight. I'll be there tonight. 
So, so Islam, more. This is the love that that that, that the Moors have for one another. Let me let me wrap this up. I don't want to hold the brother up too long. And people are asking now, are, are you going to be on the show? Are you going to be on the show? The brother has said he's going to be on the show. We were supposed to come a few months ago. Uh, our brother Sharif and El Bay reached out to him, but he was busy at the time. Um, hopefully, we can find time in the near future to get it going on. Um, however, I'm gonna ask him a question that everybody wants to know. Um, Everybody always asking, and you answered it off camera, about Othello's children. Somebody right in this chat just mentioned, and the audience is not just a Moorish audience. Let's be clear. Somebody in there right now saying black power. Um, and, and whatever that encompasses, all is well. But make sure that it, 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 it subscribes you to uplifting our people. However, um, I don't believe in division piece. That, that's not my thing. Um, however... It was somebody else in there and say, well, wasn't Othello married to a European? I think y'all taking the, the title of the book without reading the book. The book, the book is not referencing Othello as a hero. It's a psychology that he is tapping into. Can you touch on, can you touch on that as you touched on it? See, I've read the book, so I understand. Yes. Uh, in short. The reason that I use the title Othello's Children is twofold. One was to make the point that the Western perspective or the Western representation of who the Moors are, if it's known by any of us raised in Western or Eurocentric society, is generally, uh, oh, I'll put this way, it certainly was more so when I was writing that book. Praise Allah and thanks to our ancestors that much of that has changed. But in the context of writing at the end of the 90s, early 2000s, most people, if you said, well, the Moors, uh, I'm talking about people within the academic environment or those who, if you will, paid attention even in high school and said, well, uh, Othello, or the Moor, Othello was a Moor. But they couldn't tell you anything else about who the Moors were. Right. Just that Othello was a Moor. So one was to reach out to those, when that book came out, 2002, people who heard about it. Second, as, as I had said earlier, Othello is an example, I believe, of where many of us are now as Moors, as Asiatics, as people of African ancestry, because yes, the prophet also said descendants of Africa. He didn't deny we were Africans. Let me clarify that too. He never denied we were Africans. It's in our sacred literature. But what, he, what, what I was trying to do was to then get people to understand that we, as Moors, or as African Americans, if you will, and definitely as blacks, don't generally love ourselves enough to work to uplift and affirm who we are as Moors, or as persons of African ancestry. And in the case of Othello, this is somebody he was married to an Italian woman. Uh, he had a he had a uh, uh, inferiority complex around his age, and then the way it's presented, he may have even had it around his ethnicity, because in in fact, Jan Carew, who I mentioned earlier, talks about how he didn't love himself even as much as another Shakespearean character, the Prince of Morocco, um, in. Um, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the name now. The other Shakespearean work about about thank you, Merchant of Venice, right? In the Merchant of Venice, and that my point is, we don't generally love ourselves enough, which is a psychological problem. And if you read the book, you'll see how I frame it, chapter by chapter, right? I'm making the argument that the term that that uh, Othello is a, if you will, a composite of the mindset of a lot of us growing up within the Western world, where we love others before we love ourselves, where we don't affirm our, uh, our culture as a resource and not simply a reference. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the great scholar, Dr. Milena Karenga, who talks about using our culture as a resource. I believe that those who truly understand Moorish science, I can't speak for everybody who calls himself a Moorish American. I can't. But in the context of what we have, those of us who've read and studied our literature, we know that we are basically saying Moorish 
is done for rational reasons yes. and reasons that are historically based. It is authentic. When we understand, in fact, I'll mention three other examples too. Um, some of us may have heard of uh, Sinke, Prince Sinke, and the great Amistad event. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I found out in the early, excuse me, in the late 1990s, there was a, a family in Connecticut who had original documents and a brick. Uh, uh, I think it was, a, it was a brick or some sort of, I forget, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was something that Sin K was said to have made when he was living in Connecticut, uh, when he was, was being held. His name was Sang Bay. Praise the Lord. That's actually what they said. And these are Europeans, European Americans, who had this and said his name is actually Sang Bay. Well, lo and behold, it's no different than uh, the man known as the Moorish Prince, Ibrahima, uh, 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 what, right, right, uh, who basically also is recognized as having been a Moor, mm -hmm. but he didn't come from Morocco. Mm -hmm. When he goes back home after he's finally freed, when it's discovered, and in fact, Henry Clay, who was the Secretary of State, who works to get him free, this African, this Moor free, when he goes back home, he goes to Liberia. Mm -hmm. Liberia is not technically, if you were part of Morocco. But it was understood that the Moorish Empire had borders that went farther south than we know today as the Kingdom of Morocco in Africa. What do you think about, what do you think about, what do you think about, what do you think about brother, I, they just asked me, I'm going to ask him one more question, family, and then we just got to get him on the show, family. I'm going to ask him one more question because he got to go. Uh, uh, um, what do you think about uh, a person in him uh, says that, and and I, and I can imagine they are part of the uh, the diaspora of the, if you will, the Black Power community, as you would call it. They would call it the RBG. That's the that's what they would call it. And they saying that why do do Moors? And and this is a rather simple question that I would love to answer, but I'm gonna ask my brother. Why do Moors put a negative connotation to the term Black when others are referring to themselves as Black? Um, we are speaking the English language. Um, if one says to me that the word black is negative only because Europeans have made it so, it is essentially understood that black is part of the English language. Even if one says that it's a, well, the original meaning, if you go back, actually had a different, uh, a different application, a different meaning. The overwhelming application of the word black in the English language is negative. So what I often say is, since we're speaking English, if we were speaking uh, an African language or a uh, so-called Middle Eastern language and we use the term and only use it for that, I'm with you. Right. But here's the difficulty. What I'm saying is you have young people, for example, are reading about the Black Death, the Black Night, um, the Black Plague, and then they are told that they are black. There's a... Uh, research being done now, uh, not now, it's been done for a while, but an uh, Indian sister from, as in Indus Valley Indian sister, who's a psychologist, I think she's up at Harvard now, named Banaji, Dr. Banaji. She makes the same argument that there's a problem. When you use the term black, it creates a psychological, uh, uh, if you will, um, problem or confusion because the negativity is so profound given the English language and how it's employed, that it creates a problem. So just from that standpoint, plus we never had a nation where we called ourselves black. Yes, we had a Moorish empire. Yes, we had a Kemet. Yes, but it translated as the black land. But once you translate it into English, it takes on a whole different connotation. That's my point. So call us Kemites. There Don't even go. use the term black. There you go. Le uh, Kemitic power, I'm with you. Right? Uh, uh, Tassetti power. I'm with you. But when you say black, what I'm saying is you're, you're trying to push an elephant uphill on roller skates. It doesn't make sense in that context. Lately, in fact, I don't know if, he, if uh, some of our brothers and sisters are familiar with the work of uh, uh, Tana Hesse Coates. He just wrote not too long ago this book, Between the World and Me. Coates, for whatever reason, I'd love to have an opportunity to speak with a brother. He makes it clear that he has a problem with the term black. He uses it, but he throughout the book he keeps saying that black just means below, black is really not who we are. He also has a problem with white. And he says, uh, 
people who are so-called white, has a problem with white. This is one of our greatest contemporary thinkers, Brother Coates. He recognizes it. Orlando Patterson, sociologist up at Harvard, author of, of um, a book that talked about slavery, slavery and social death. He also, 10 odd years ago, talked about how he wanted to get out from under using the term black. At one point, he stopped using it. He said, but it, it, people kept coming to him. Yeah. He was at, For him, he was using the term Afro-American. He was using the term Euro-American or European-American. Because he said, as a sociologist who was critically thinking about you know, social death and how basically the society works, that the use of, the, of that term was essentially creating that confusion in the mind and he said look just call ourselves who we are we are just we're africans i get i'm down with that <laughs> call us anything about the negative right. it's right. just overwhelmingly right. negative because there is a continent known as africa absolutely so it's at least, i mean it's a place yes and it's a place clearly that has the great civilization but what i'm saying is uh from a psychological standpoint uh, and, and again, from so in a spiritual standpoint as well, to identify ourselves as black for me is problematic. We're African people. We're descendants of Kemite. We're descendants of Moors. And when someone will tell me that Moor just translates as black, again, they haven't heard anything I just said. <laughs> right? Because in, in, uh, in, you know, in different languages, uh, in Spanish, you can use um, the word uh, uh, saber to know or conocer to know. They both don't mean the same thing. That's right. So essentially, what I'm getting at is, using the term black, we may be able to, to try to give it a favorable intent in our minds. But as I said, the law of the country also made it clear that if you were designated as black, that is not a nation, it's not personal, which meant that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be protected under the laws. That's why Asians don't call themselves yellows. <laughs> That's why Asians don't call themselves browns. They identify themselves from where they're from. I'm from India, I'm from uh, Cambodia, I'm from China, etc. They don't use a color name to identify themselves. And I'm getting back to the same thing. If you are proud to be black, it means you're proud to be African, I would assume. So embrace Africa. African power. Islam. Right? That makes more sense to me. Right. That's what I'm saying. But, you know, people have to find their own way. Family, this is the great scholar, Jose Pimenta Bay. It's been a pleasure. Um, we're going to get him on the show. Everybody is asking. I see they chiming in real heavy uh, with the brother. they saying thank you. Uh, uh, we, they, they hope to see you on the show. And like I say, this audience of More Swirl TV, and I hope it grows even more. Um, with out the end of the day, it's probably going to be 500, 600 people. By the end of the week, it's going to be a thousand some views. This is on YouTube right now. Um, but they saying thank you, um, teach, teach elder. They didn't call you. Elder. Don't you call my brother no elder yet? <laughs> He's just getting started. <laughs> they say teach elder. But I want to thank you, my brother. I'm your brother to Harker Bay, and I'm going to bring you more information like this. It's time to get rid of the information from the corner scholars that haven't been through the vigorous progress. I mean process if you will, of really becoming a scholar. You can't just pick up a book one day and say you're a scholar. Scholar to me means an expert on the matter. You're an expert. And the expert on the matter of, of, of being a scholar is ever evolving. It's ever growing. You, you, you're learning more over and over and over. You don't pick a book up and then say that we're black because uh, um, the black means that the cosmos was black and that's just what it is. You, that, that's, that's not scholarship. That's foolishness and it's, and it's confusion. You know, um, but I want to thank my brother. Uh, he's on Morris Royal TV right now, but we're going to get him back. We're going to get some lunch and I'm going to get some more interviews tonight. I'm going to be in the temple with the Supreme Grand Sheik uh, Braswell Bay. Um, right now, my GB, they might be a little upset with me, but they know I'm a Moorish missionary. I got to go do the work. It is what it is. So Islam, peace and love, family, and African power, comedic power. power. And we all going to work it out at the end of the day. Peace and love. Thank you. But more, more I really appreciate.